All right, well, I'm back in the garage finally. I haven't made a video in quite a while. It's, um, I've just been extremely busy with school. We, um, I'm in my last uh, semester of engineering at the University of Calgary, so um, we're working on uh, our, our, final our final year project. And uh, my group is actually redesigning the electrical system in an entire building, so it's uh, not exactly a straightforward, simple task we're doing. So it's uh, definitely writing the reports and uh, all the calculations and everything for that are uh, pretty intense. So uh, yeah, so I'm finally just getting back to the bike now, and I got tons to share with everyone today because I'm kind of behind on everything. But um, yeah, starting off from the, my last video there when I was talking about the um, the bug in the remote code. I, uh, I successfully changed that code uh, and, and I've checked it several times now. It's been well over a week and uh, there's been absolutely no problems at all. So I think that small code change definitely uh, fixed it. It was a pretty goofy mistake I made there, but uh, that definitely did the trick. Um, also, I, uh, I just came back here and I cleaned up the sprocket a while back and I just inspected it. And it's definitely, I was completely wrong in that other video that the sprocket definitely has a lot of life left in it. So I'm going to keep running that sprocket as is. Um, I also checked out the chain. The chain is perfect as well. So I'm going to use my, uh, uh, the stock uh, 428 O-ring chain on this thing. And on that note, um, I actually ended up ordering, uh, I found a source for those metric sprockets I was talking about. Those um, 08B metric sprockets. They have the um, the tooth pattern of a 428 chain, and I uh, managed to find some that are going to fit onto the motor shaft with just a minor bit of modification. And I ended up ordering those from England because a company in the states wouldn't sell them to me; they wouldn't ship them to me. So, yeah, to hell with that. I'll just order them from England. So that's what I did. So I ordered uh, four sprockets from England of uh, varying varying tooth sizes, or sorry, tooth counts. And uh, so I can um, I can change the ratio really easily, and I'll have uh, four different gearing options. So uh, yeah, I'll talk more about those uh, when I get those in. Probably probably sometime next week. And once I get those in as well, um, all I need uh, all I need is a couple days of warm weather, and this thing will I can take her on for out for her first spin. So I'm uh, pretty excited for that. Um, also, I've decided to use um, crazy carpets for the um, chain grease guard um, as well as the uh, front water splash guard here. I'm going to just put a, a crazy carpet in here to uh, keep the water and the rocks and stuff that get flung up by the front tire keep them from getting into the batteries and stuff there. Definitely don't want that to happen so yeah I figured crazy carpets are perfect. They're cheap, they're really durable, uh, they're waterproof and I mean yeah if, this, if these things get battered by rocks all the time it, They'll be fine, they're pretty tough, so I figured those will work out great. Um, what else? Oh yeah, on a, another note, um, I had some charger issues lately. Uh, so, um, yeah, what I back when the bike was a lead bike, um, I found out that those chargers I showed before, you can actually pop them open, and inside of them there's a turn pot. And you can adjust the turn pot so that the um, the uh, float voltage of the of the battery of the battery charger is adjustable. So um, I adjusted all those things to 13.6 volts back when it was a lead bike, so it'd float the batteries at 13.6, which was perfect. Um, but I think the reason why they're going into that weird float mode all the time, or they're kind of cycling back and forth, is because that voltage was too low. So I figured I'd go back and I'd tweak it up, maybe a volt or so on each one, and uh, give that a go. But it didn't go so well. I uh, I ended up blowing up a charger somehow. It's like I, I tweaked them all to 14.5 volts, and then uh, yeah, I had it just hooked up to the bike here as as usual. And I, I flicked the switch, I turned the charges on, and they started charging as normal. And it, it seemed like it was going really good at first, but then uh, within five seconds or so one of the chargers started smoking and just went kaput and I shut it off and unplugged it and and you know no harm done to the bike or anything just uh, the charger just went poof so um, yeah so um, I was left without a charger so 
uh, yeah, so I ended up, uh, I ended up, uh, you'll, you'll see, uh, what happens, uh, what I ended up doing in a, in a bit here. I'll, I'll, uh, dissect one of those chargers and we'll see, we'll try to figure out what, uh, went wrong with it. But I think that'll be, uh, pretty challenging. So I'm not sure it was my fault because I tweaked the, um, I tweaked the voltage up a little bit or whether it was just a, the chargers are just really poorly built or poorly designed or something, but, uh, yeah, one of them went pop, so. Uh, definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely not good. Alright, so here's the charger that blew up. So if I pop the cover here, you'll see right away that yeah, there's a whole bunch of muck and stuff on here from that capacitor that blew up. And, um, yeah, the capacitor that blew up, oddly enough, isn't the one on the output at all. It's actually, um, this one that was here before it was the one that blew up. And it was a 35 volt, 1000 microfarad capacitor. So either that capacitor was just a really shoddy capacitor or the rating on that was grossly exceeded. And I'm pretty sure the rating was grossly exceeded because of how fast it went. I mean, this thing went up in probably just a, just a few seconds, maybe five seconds, and then it was done. So, so yeah. Um, and, and after having a second look at this uh, circuit in here, I can't believe I didn't really catch this last time I opened, opened this up, one of these up. Um, it's really obvious. It's just this whole thing is just a buck regulator. So I think what happens here is that maybe about 20 volts or so is supposed to be on that capacitor there. So there's 20 volts there. And then uh, there's an N-channel MOSFET here, a diode here. It's a shoddy diode. And this, as it turns out, is an inductor. It's so obvious now. If I just, um, it might be a bit hard to see on the camera, but if you look really carefully, you can actually just see that... Um, you can see the coils on that part if you look really closely. So that that uh, part there is actually just an inductor. So uh, yeah, it's got the classic op amp circuit here. It's got a um, dual channel op amp, and obviously um, a voltage reference is fed into one of those inputs, and that's what this area is over here. This uh, package here is a voltage reference, and it's adjustable with this turn pot. So that that's what I was adjusting. Is that I originally had it set at um, um, all these charges were set at 13.6 volts, and I figured to stop them from going into that uh, weird pulsing float mode, I would just crank it up a little bit. So I turned it up to 14.5, uh, and uh, yeah, so obviously none of the other charges had a problem. It was just this one for some reason, so I'm not really sure what happened, but um, yeah, so so basically through, through op-amp action, you got... Um, the reference being fed into the op amp, and then the op amp controls the MOSFET, and that just uh, so whatever whatever voltage the uh, through op amp action, the op amp just puts um, spits out uh, the output voltage for whatever uh, reference voltage you have, and that's it. It's as simple as that. It's just a buck regulator here, and then you know you have some additional stuff for uh, LED indication and uh, all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get a better close up here. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not really sure what caused this capacitor to blow. I, I did try replacing it with an equivalent um, capacitor. The, be the best thing I had on hand was a um, 35 volt, uh, I think it was several hundred microfarad capacitor. Not nearly as big as the 1000, but that's all I really had on hand. So I gave that a go and uh, yeah, just absolutely nothing. I got no voltage coming out of the output, so um, I suspect something else is blowing up now as well. That capacitor is probably just one of the things to go. I'm sure maybe the op amp is toast now too. Uh, probably is because I think the um, maximum voltage on this op amp is uh, spec'd out at 28 volts or something. So if that uh, capacitor blew up at 35 volts or more, then odds are this is blown up and yeah, who knows what else is blown up. So yeah, so all in all, this thing is just a piece of junk. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you if you have these chargers, you you can adjust the um, output voltage a little bit, but uh, yeah, be careful not to turn it too high, because uh, maybe that's a design flaw in this thing. Maybe they just um, if you crank it up too far, it just blows itself up, or or heck, maybe it was just uh, maybe this. I've had these chargers for quite a while. Maybe the capacitors were just dried out and and just poor quality, and that just just blew up, and then it caused a lot of problems when it blew up. I'm really not sure, but in any case, um, 
she's toast, she's dead. So uh, I'll show you my uh, new toy that I got from um, another electric vehicle enthusiast actually. I, I got a new uh, charger, so we'll check that out in a sec here. Alright, so here's the new charger I got. Um, yeah, I actually got this off of another electric vehicle enthusiast uh, used. He was using it to charge up his um, 72 volt lead acid uh, lead acid car. So, uh, and I guess the um, he said it was just the voltage was just a bit too high for his car, so it was overcharging his batteries. So, but this should work out fine for me. Um, you know, all I really need is just a current limited power supply, and that's pretty much all I need. And and my B mass will take care of the rest. So, when a uh, cell goes over voltage, you'll just shut off the mains to the charger, and uh, everything should be good. So uh, yeah, so this thing can charge up to um, 88.2 volts at 10 amps, and it's a um, Kelly 7210 uh, charger. And you know, considering this is a Chinese-made charger, it's I'm pretty impressed that there's no real horrible Chinglish on here or anything. It's all in English. It's legible. And on the back here, it actually says it's made by uh, Kingpan Charger. So. I guess it's a rebranded Kingpan charger. It's rebranded as a Kelly charger. So uh, yeah, we're gonna give this thing a go in a in a bit here. So I already went ahead and um, put on uh, connectors for it for my bike. So uh, yeah, we'll give this thing a spin in a bit. And and initially, I'm already uh, pretty impressed by this thing. It's pretty pretty solid feeling, and it's uh, got some good weight to it. So it's all made of. Uh, um, it's got a metal, nice metal case and everything. So. Yeah, it should uh, do the business, so we're going to give it a go in a bit here. Alright, so I made that last connection there. Uh, so now it's just time to fire up the charger and see what happens. So let's give it a go. Charger on. we got green lights. There's no noise. And plus 12 amps and the voltage is definitely coming up. So there we go. Charger is working. 80 volts. And if I remember correctly, I think the BMS is set for 3.35 or something. So I think it's going to cut off the charger pretty quick here. Probably within just a few seconds cuz yeah, it's 10 amps. So we'll see what happens. Let's uh let's wait and see. All right, so the charger's been going for uh probably no more than 2 minutes now. Oh, there we go. I was just going to comment that I started to feel it getting a bit warm, so uh, but the fan just kicked in there. So, yeah, definitely going to mount this thing on a, a metal plate with a fan pointing at it when it's when it's all said and done. So, I think I'm just going to shut it off here, and uh, yeah, she works great. So, I'm really happy. This thing is uh, definitely going to work out. So, I just powered her down there. So and I changed the upper voltage limit to 3.4 there while I was off camera. So yeah, the uh, BMS didn't have a chance to trip or anything yet. It's just uh, yeah, she's done. There we go. Excellent. Well, charger does the business, so everything's all good. Um, yeah, the regulators are going now. They're set at 3.35 still from last time, so it's uh, pretty conservative. Well, looks like they're just starting to shut off there. So anyway, on the uh, on the next video I make, um, it'll probably be the bike running. So I'm pretty pumped for that. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, update this uh, some more when uh, I get those sprockets in. So uh, yeah, see you next time.